This is KGW News at Noon. Thanks for joining us at Noon. I'm Brenda Braxton. We start today with some of your local headlines. This morning, thousands of students walked out of school all across Oregon demanding action on climate change. They want Governor Tina Kotek to declare a statewide climate emergency. Here in the Rose City, they're also demanding that the state deny Zenith Energy's request to expand its Portland terminal. It receives crude oil brought in by train. The man accused of stealing a Portland fireboat is scheduled to be in court later today. Dustin Knutson is accused of taking the boat from Fire Station 21 near the Hawthorne Bridge yesterday morning. Authorities accuse him of driving it up the Columbia River and stopping to ask for food and cigarettes along the way. The Coast Guard eventually arrested him near Kalama and the boat had significant damage. Knutson was cited and then released from jail. Tonight, a new weapon detection system will be in play at a high school football game in Portland. PPS is testing it during the McDaniels game against Lincoln. As fans arrive, they will walk between a set of pillars that detect weapons. An alarm will sound if that system finds anything. The district is beefing up security after four shootings outside Portland high schools last year. Infighting on the Multnomah County Commission has some important decisions on hold. Leaders can't agree on how to spend a multi-million dollar windfall earmarked for the homeless. KGW's Blair Best takes a look at what's at stake. When I finally got the treatment. In a packed Multnomah County boardroom Thursday morning, a fragile slice of Portland was front and center. When I finally made it to recovery, I had just survived my eighth overdose. Within the last month of my addiction, I was in and out of every hospital in the Portland area due to drugs and alcohol. In emotional testimony, about 40 people asked county commissioners for one thing. I come here today asking that some of the funds be directed to recovery housing, detox and treatment. You have the power to save many lives. It's just a flick of your pen. Please help us. I hear loud and clear what you are all asking for. And, you know, I think it's going to be really important that as we make these decisions about the SHS funds, we are acting on what we heard. In total, Multnomah County has more than 100 million unspent dollars meant for the homeless and addiction crisis. Last week, they voted on how to spend 17 million of it. And this week, they're deciding how to spend 62 million more. First of all, I just want to start off by thanking everyone for continuing to engage in this process of digging. County Chair Jessica Vega-Peterson is proposing the following. 21 million for more shelter beds in Portland. 12 million for sobering centers and transitional housing, 9 million for rent assistance, 3 million for day centers, 10 million for homelessness prevention projects, and 2 million for homelessness data collection services. No one should characterize this as a take it or leave it proposal. This is a collaboration and I haven't proposed allocating every last dollar. But there was no collaboration as the meeting quickly reached a standstill. I don't think we'll have time to like have meaningful interaction about about that. So as commissioners a, bickered over procedural issues that seem to continually hijack these important discussions. Discussions the chair allocated just 30 minutes for. Like we just got your proposal, what, the, the night of Tuesday. I didn't even see it till yesterday morning. And then it's out there. That is not a way to have these conversations. And I just want to echo on the, the time piece. Yeah. Um, I have some comments and questions, yeah. and my comments and questions alone would take the remaining yeah. half yeah. hour. Yeah. So, you know, I think we're going to need more time. Yeah. Until we as a group figure out what is the process to determine our priorities, I think we're going to be talking in circles because right now there's no guardrails. We are just like all over the place. This left Commissioner Julia Brim Edwards with just six minutes to share her ideas. Commissioner Shushila Jayapal didn't even get the chance. Uh, so just to my comments. Um, First, I want to say that I'm very supportive of the creation of more shelter beds. Or, so, I mean, Julia, I'm going to, um, I'm sorry, Commissioner Brim Edwards, I'm going to, we're over okay. time and I want to. Thank you for allowing me to yeah. share my concerns yeah. and I look forward to the process. Yeah, and we will. Blair Best, KGW News. Now to economic struggles in Southeast Portland. Some business owners say they can't make it work here in the Rose City anymore. 
Pied Cow Cafe owner Jimmy Chen worked at the cafe for 20 years before buying it a decade later. Now he says he's closing it for good after the business just couldn't bounce back from the pandemic. In the meantime, just a mile away, Jakaiva Bakery and Chocolatier is set to close as well, also citing the pandemic and crime. Customers at both spots say they're sad to see such great businesses go. Uh, it's really unfortunate to see how many Portland classic places are going down. It's just one after the next. Portland small businesses are struggling and we're no different. Uh, it's just very hard right now in this environment. The owner of Jakaiva says that they will update their plans regularly on social media, but Pied Cow Cafe is set to close this Sunday. Let's head back to the Weather Center now and check in with Rod. Temps are bouncing into the 90s. Yeah, do you remember this time yesterday, Brenda? I wasn't fully confident we were going to make it to 90. We thought we could. Well, we did. We hit 90, our forecast high yesterday. Now, today, we thought we would see the warm up happen more rapidly during the day. That is absolutely on track. I think it was 73 at this time 24 hours ago. We're at 79 right now. So absolutely, I stand here and tell you it's a slam dunk that we will get up into the 90s this afternoon. And for now, I've left my forecast high temperature at 94 for the Rose City. Here are the other numbers. You folks in Salem, 80. You stayed in the 80s at McNary Field yesterday. It's only 87, but you'll make it up into the 90s this afternoon. Here's the day planner for the Rose City. That forecast high in the 4 o'clock hour, 90 four degrees. The record today, by the way, is 96. I don't think that's in jeopardy, but I like 93 or 94. And then still 85 for a very warm Friday evening. The weekend still looks dry, but we will be cooling off. That complete forecast coming up. All right, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Rod. United Auto Workers are now on strike after failing to reach new contract agreements with Detroit's big three automakers. At midnight, workers walked out of three plants. NBC's Jay Gray is at the Ford Assembly Plant in Wayne, Michigan with the latest. Well, the targeted walkouts began at midnight and continue now into the midday. It started at this Ford plant in Wayne, just outside of Detroit, as well as a GM plant in Missouri and a Stellantis plant, which builds Chrysler vehicles in Ohio. Take a look at the picket line behind me. And right now, just under 13,000 of the United Auto Workers, 145,000 employees have gone from the assembly line to the picket line. This is part of a new strategy never uh, done before by the union. They call it a stand-up strike where they are just targeting certain work groups within certain plants with the idea leaders say to keep the uh, automakers kind of guessing and wondering where the strike may go next and they say they do have the ability and likely will expand this strike as it continues to go on now at issue here is obviously pay the union wanting a 40 percent raise over the next four years, but they also want more pension benefits and they want more job security. They say they want full pay for a four day work week. And what the automakers have said is that those demands are just too, their words, extreme. They say they are willing to provide a double digit pay raise, that they will increase pensions and they'll offer some more days off as far as vacation or personal time off, but that the four day work week for full pay is a non-starter, that that is not going to happen as far as they can, are concerned. So you can see both sides here very much uh, at odds and very far apart, both saying as the talks broke down yesterday that neither was negotiating in good faith. If there's any good news in all of this, it does look like they are willing to get back to the bargaining table, and that could happen as early as today. That's the latest from here in Wayne, Michigan. I'm Jay Gray. Now back to you.